So the reason we're sitting here, man, Man of the Woods, this new album, four and a half year gap, you become a dad. That's really why you took the time, right? Spend some time with your son. Yeah, I've, ne I've never felt more inept in my life. Right. Like you wake up and all of a sudden there's this human being you're responsible for. And right. I still, I mean, yeah. you know, you, he'll, it's exhilarating he'll and beautiful be and three very and... soon. And, and you talked about your 11 year old. My three year old's already running our house. So you, you're, with your, you're with your family. You, do, you take the necessary time off. It's the smart move, life first. And then, man of the woods. This album, dude, start to finish, I feel like this is the closest I feel that we get to you. As a person, I would agree with that for sure. I mean, it's it's definitely the most introspective record I've made. Mm -hmm. I think every I think every album that I've done before that was about aspiration, and like, how can I pay homage to my influences while, you know, like oh suit and tie, like it, yeah, it's not about expensive taste, but it is about class. Wouldn't you like? Why not aspire to that? And also, there's an element of like, who am I going to be on each record, as opposed to who am I right now. Exactly. Right? So So I talk about I talk about everything before Man of the Woods is aspiration and then Man of the Woods really is inspiration. I because you look in you sort of, you know, when you have kids, all of a sudden you're you're faced with your ch own childhood and mm -hmm. good and bad and and you know, am I going to completely mess this kid up? I feel like the success of parenthood is feeling like uh I failed all day today, but I get to wake up tomorrow and do it again. You know, like, and and hopefully they turn out to be a, a good human being. Pharrell, I texted Pharrell last night. I said, I'm going to talk to Justin tomorrow. He's like, it's going to be a good one. I was like, I'm looking forward to it. Okay. And uh, I said to him, you know, can you give me just a little something? Just so then he went away and it was like about an hour. And I was like, well, you know, that's what that what that's called is the showbiz no, which is just like, yeah, yeah, I don't want to say no. So the, I go quiet. The non-response The non-response is the most respectful <laughs> response, right? So I was like, he's given me the no, yeah? But then he came back and he said, uh, Justin is at a place in life where he realizes anything he does has to have meaning, which I think is a beautiful quote. What does that mean to you? I mean, I would agree with that for sure. It, it, you know, the funny thing is like, this sound that that ended up on this album came out of like two years of conversations with Pharrell, talking about sound and talking about like, no, there, there, there's this real estate, there's this sonic real estate that's so available. Mm. And he kept pushing me and pushing me to say, uh, no, but you're the guy that has to do it because you're from there. You know, you're from the South. You can you can put like a positive thing out there about the South and we can do it with the sound. And I know like I can hear it. He kept telling me I can hear it. And when Pharrell says that, you never fight against that. Right. And we were talking about where do we start? Where do we start? And and we were talking about parenthood. And he said, he said, what's your son's name? And, and, and I said, Silas, you know, I named him after my grandfather and my great grandfather who those guys were, you know, the, uh, my grandfather was, was, was pretty much, you know, my parents divorced when I was young. So my grandfather was very much a father figure to me, but obviously from two generations removed, you know, like just tough as nails. And like, he said to me, he said, what does, what does your son's name mean? And I was like, you know, I've never, I don't know. And I literally just went on Google, like meaning of the name Silas. And it sent me to this, to this site. And it said, of Latin origin, meaning man of the woods. And there it is. And, and I said, it means man of the woods. <sighs> and I was like, how serendipitous that my last name is Timberlake. Like, what does that mean? And like, <laughs> we were having all these discussions yeah. and he goes, man, you know what? That's a, that's a really, really good name for a song. And I was like, that's a really good name for an album. Filthy's a banger. I said that to you. I reached out to you before we had a chat and just was like, man, the first time I heard yeah, that, thank I you loved all that. the kind of live, you know, but then when the bass line comes and it's like, all right, you know, we're slinking in. It's a palate cleanser. It's kind of almost a little bit of a diversion tactic. It's like a depth charge in the water, I think, a little bit, which I like. It is disruptive, which I think when we started looking at all the songs, it was like, I mean, why not? You know, like, let's just kick everybody in the balls right now. Yeah, which you did. So as well as being an uncredited uh, uh, actor 
on one of the greatest films of all time, Pop Star, uh, Never Stop Stopping, which I, I can't believe you're uncredited. It's the biggest mistake you've ever made in your career. Uh, you also held off uh, from crediting your wife vocally at the end of the song, and a lot of people started to talk about, is that, Je is that Jessica on mm. the end of the song? Well, the answer is obviously... Yes. Yes. I mean, you say that as your wife. Yes. Did was she into it, or did you have to like? How did that? Nah, happen? she was into it. I, it started off as there's a very specific interlude that is all hers, where I just created a bed of music for her to speak over, which becomes the intro for song flannel. Flannel, yeah. And I felt like in the when I start se started sequencing the album, I felt like. You're right. Filthy comes in and it's just like it's like it's like trying to get through the first 30 seconds of a round with Mike Tyson at his peak, you know, and and so I knew that that was that sort of like kick in the pants, like I said. So I felt like immediately I wanted to cleanse the palate and then take you directly into where you going? The forest. I mean, when the second song kicks in, Midnight Summer's Jam, and it's the return of you with Neptunes, mm. one, one of the things I love the most about that song, I mean, I love the track, is the fact that you can't let it go. It keeps stopping and coming back, stopping and coming. And it, to me, it felt like you were just like, I'm so happy to be back in the studio with these guys. I just, I just can't stop the record. So that was Pharrell. Right. Because I was, I was specifically like, we're doing the antithesis of what we did right. last time. We are not letting anything meander, yeah. you know, um, or at least just the illusion of, of, of meandering. And Pharrell was like, we're calling it Midnight Summer Jam. Like, we got to keep jamming. We got to keep jamming. Let's just do an outro that, that, that this would be fun. So like if people play this, mm. you know, like it, it just keep, they just keep dancing. The beautiful bit in the middle with the MJ harmonies, man, which you do so beautifully. You get the tone, you just stack them, and it's just that wonderful sense. Oh, you're talking about Midnight Summer yeah, still? Yeah, yeah, it's just that kind of real beautiful kind of harmonic, you know, nice. that, that harmony thing. I wonder who is your favorite vocalist alive today? Who's the f person who crush kills you? Alive? It's hard for me to get past Frank. Like, I struggle. Oh, Frank is phenomenal. I mean, to me, when he when he sings, I just become drawn into his well, world. Well, Frank's like, like this great R&B singer... And, and and Bob Dylan at the same time. You know, the expression and the honesty that comes through, you know, you talk about a person that writes in Rubik's Cube of cryptic material, but the vocal, yeah, the out. emotion of the vocal yeah, yeah. gives you a glimpse into how genius the lyrics are. Mm -hmm. And it's almost like everything with the lyrics is so cerebral, but everything with his voice is is all heart. This song called Source, track number three. Um, you know, uh, what's the line? Juice is temporary, source is forever. <laughs> yeah. There's a sense of that song, which is quite Vegas. I think I feel like there's a sense of that kind of showman that comes out in Source. You know, it's a very absolutely. Show. And I wonder, you know, because it's super fun. It's almost like, it's almost like, uh, you know, I kept referencing Brittany Howard. As far as like, I wanted like things to feel compressed, and uh -huh. and 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 you know, I wanted the drums to feel compressed, and the and and the guitars to have, uh, you know, a little more buzz to them. Yeah. But I still wanted it to have like it's a good. Smokey Robinson vibe to it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like Tears of a Clown is a genius song, and it's it's so sad, but it, for some reason you feel happy every time you listen to it. <laughs> yeah. You know, and and so yeah. there's a showmanship to that. You know, um, would you do Vegas one day? Would, would you ever consider it? I mean, there's more people doing it, right? Lady Gaga's just announced. I mean, I wouldn't rule it out if it was something that was different. I definitely don't, you know. <laughs> I immediately am like, it, it, like, it, it, it feels like the, it feels like, uh, uh, you're option? planning your you're planning your retirement. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean. So, so for some yeah. reason that feels like scary to and me. And understandably so. The, the the person who did Vegas better than anybody was Prince. You know, like he was like, yeah, I'll just show up when I show up, and I'll play like ten shows a year, and 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 it'll be it'll be me because I'm the greatest ever that ever did it. Well, what's what's your favorite Prince story? <laughs> I can't say it. Oh, I can't man. say. It. Come um, on. Yeah, it involves too much profanity uh, okay. that he was not a fan of. What? The um, for for somebody like him, like any time that I got like the nod of like I really like I really like your new record, I was like, well, you've heard it, <laughs> you know. You just yeah. feel like like Prince is so dope. He should only listen to him, <laughs> you know. Like, 
and, and so pretty much and and and, and yeah. so um i just I, i'm not even listening to you right them. now i'm just wishing you could tell me that other story i'll tell you after <laughs> okay i'll tell you after uh, man of the woods title track now we're getting into it um this is really where the modern Americana really shows itself in a big way. Um, thematically, this is kind of the I'm a man, I don't know how to speak about my feelings record to some degree is what I got from right, it, right? right. Like, uh, <laughs> That's funny, yeah. <laughs> I mean, is, it, is there an element of that to it? That's yeah, no, it like. became, so, so, so obviously the idea came to write a song called Man of the Woods because we found out my son's name is Man of the Woods and, yeah. and so, so, but Pharrell was like, you know, it's kind of just a, he, he, we were talking and he, he was like, you know, it's just kind of, sounds like a cool way to say I'm just a guy from the South and I know my pride gets in the way sometimes. And Are you an old fashioned guy like that sometimes? Uh, yeah, I think so. I think I can. I think I could be that way very easily. So what's great about that particular song is, is you know, once again, you're re you're referencing your relationship, you're self-reflecting on what you do and cannot do, and what you wish you could do, but what you do to get around that. Mm -hmm. uh, what is the most frustrating thing? What do you know frustrates your wife most of all about Me? yourself? <laughs> I mean, yeah. we don't have enough time to tell you all the things that I'm sure frustrates her about me. Um, I can tell you one small thing that I, I did just popped up in my mind that definitely uh, gets on her nerves okay. uh, about me is that she'll ask me a question and I'll be processing the answer to it. But it really comes across like I did not pay attention to anything she just said. <laughs> right. She's like, did you hear what I said? Yes, I heard. I'm still reserving my yes or no. <laughs> right. I'm not sure. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm getting frustrated. You just tell me about that. Um, <laughs> she's gonna be in the video. Is she gonna be in the video for that? She's a, she's in the video. For she's that in the one. video for that one. That was, we had so much fun. So much fun. What was the what was the vibe of the day? Um, it was just it. You know, you you hear all these stories about people who work together that yeah. are you know bonded otherwise and and it was so easy I, I actually hope we get to work together again on more stuff mm -hmm. you know because having her around she's such an influence on the album and so in that song being so special it just felt like it just felt like a great moment to for us to share and and uh I just wanted it to be honest, you know? There are other songs on the album that videos that I feel like require a different level of performance, but that one was the first song written for the album. It was written specifically about her. It's almost like, you know, there's two love letters on the album. Man of the Woods is my love letter to her, and Young Man is my mm -hmm. love letter to my son. Mm -hmm. And so it just felt like nothing else would do. Higher Higher has one of the best lyrics on the record, I think, when you say, um, you know, stress is cool, fame's a lie, success is cool, money is fine, but you're special. Like, that's just a really beautifully constructed couplet, which kind of yeah. sums up yeah, what's stress important. Is cruel. What's, stress is cruel, that's right, yeah. stress is cruel. Yeah. You know, and, and, and it's just, it sums up exactly what, okay, what's important, let's get to the core of what Man in the Woods is about. Like, do I really care about all this stuff anymore? Shouldn't I be focused more on this? Right. Is that still a line you have to walk for yourself? Do you have to challenge yourself to not get caught up in stress and not feel the burden of fame? Fame is not a burden to me. You know, I really do believe it's a lie. Mm. You know, it's not, it doesn't, it, it's not something that, that is tangible. Mm, mm. You can't ever hold on to it. It doesn't matter. You know, stress is a real thing. Yeah, man, for real. It is cruel, oh, yeah. you know? So yeah, stress, stress I, I still have trouble with. Mm. I can be very stressed out sometimes, a lot of the time, if I'm <laughs> most of the time. <laughs> Um, I can be extremely obsessive, especially especially when it comes to, um, uh, especially when it comes to music specifically. I think music actually lends itself to the compulsive mind. I think the idea of focusing sure. on one thing for a long period of time is what offsets that compulsion. It's actually probably the medicine, the medicine, the artistic side of the brain. No question. Yeah. No question. Um, I think I think the only thing that that really helps me through it is I've adopted this this uh, po I've adopted the possibility of anything, mm. and I think that that frees you from a little bit of obsessive compulsive behavior. Yeah, you're learning to let go. It's sure. a song called Waves on the record. It's one of my favorites, no question. Oh, I do. Sure. I love this song so much. It's just I so really love that song too. It so makes me feel 
really good. And you get to do a whistle solo on it, which is like <laughs> unbelievable. I mean, I'm trying to think the last great yeah. whistle solo that occurred in music. You know, uh, Sadiq is uh, playing the bass on that. Yes, I found this out before we started, man. Super yeah. freak, unique, like Raphael Sadiq, right? Yeah. Instant, Mr. Instant Vintage himself. Like, yeah. this is one of my favorite musicians of all time, and it is eternally stylish human Me beings. too, man. So, he's he's yeah. he's a phenomenal musician, and for this one came late in the game. Yeah. This one came late in the game because we were just talking about, we felt like we were like, we felt like we were like, okay, we've got all these songs about being in the mountains and yeah. in the trees. And like, we started, you know, I think we were talking about like, well, what does vacation feel like? Yeah. You know, between loved ones, yeah. you know, what can that feel like? And, you know, we start talking about like, well, what's the last great, you know, tropical vacation. Where was it? It was in the Caribbean. Right. You know, and we started talking about that and then the story just spilled itself out and it was like, we wanted that that vibe of that bounce, you know, that just made you feel like you were, you know, whatever drink you had, there was, you know, there was an umbrella in it. You got some leisure going on, bro. I mean, you definitely find a way to do things. I'm gonna pull up a few photos here um, that, okay. I've, that, I've, that I've put aside. Uh, you're into your big game fishing. That was, right, uh, a, I haven't done that a ton, but like when you go, it is fun. And for everyone the out there, we you, ate that fish. Is it the biggest fish you've caught? That's one of them, yeah. Who's the dude? Yeah. That's a, he's a pro golfer, that's Justin Rose, that's a buddy of mine. It's funny you should bring golf up, as you with Steph Curry on the golf course. Golfing plays yes. a big part of your life. And What's I, your handicap? I never would have picked it. Right now, my handicap is like four. Is that good? It's good, right? It's pretty good. That means it's amazing. It's pretty good. <laughs> That's a, be humble. It's uh, yeah. Be humble. Sit down. Be humble. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, yeah. It, you know, the, the golf is. I never would have like. I used to laugh at people who play golf, but like I just got into it because my. Um, I was on the first tour mm. and I felt like I was, I, it was like Groundhog Day. Like I, I was, I, I showed up to an arena and I was like, we've already played this arena. Why are we still on this tour? And it's mm. like, they all look the, they all look the same. And I was just indoors all the time. And, and you know, my, my stage manager at the time was like, Hey, you know, me and a couple of buddies from the crew are going to go out tomorrow and, and, and play golf. You should come with us. And I was like, I want to go play golf. And, uh. I don't know why I sound like Jimmy Iovine right there. <laughs> uh, I don't want to go play golf. Um, and um, and and I went out with them, and it was like you know, a case of beer later. I was just like, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, like my handicap, four. my handicap got down to about a, a scratch, a zero, and then I literally looked around and was like, I have no life. I should like stop playing golf so much. Are you better than Steph Curry? Uh, I don't think so. I don't think so. Um, Steph would be Steph would be giving me strokes. I think. I think his handicap is better than mine. I want to talk about this song called Supplies. Um, this is a swerve, produced by Neptunes. Interesting track, melodically very southern, very country. A lot, a lot of a lot of the close knit circles. Favorite. Yeah, beat wise, very heavy. Uh, true story. Elements of a true story. Yeah, there there were elements of of a true story. I mean, that you know, for the sake of the song, you know, heightened and flipped and like you said, swerved. But but yeah, it came from a from a place. Um, and yeah, man, that I mean, what's it about? Without giving away the story too much, I mean, protect it, but give us an idea as to what you want to get across in the song. You know, I mean, the visual for the video, which have you uh, made a video for every song? Well, I've made a video for four of them so far. All right. Um, the video for that song will be a bit of a statement, um, and I'll let people sort of, mm -hmm. you know, interpret it the way they want to, but, um, it, it, it definitely started off as, I mean, just the, the simple idea of the song is like, if the world ends, I got you. If it all comes crashing down, I got you back. Yeah, and it started off with it started off with the bass and the and the drums, so it had the it definitely was, you know, it had that modern tempo. Well, pop music has changed shape yeah. so dramatically since you were even released the last record. Absolutely. In the last two years, we're seeing the way pop music, and it's always been the most mm. adaptable genre of music. It's always molding, absorbing, and swallowing, and regurgitating, and changing its shape. And and if you think about, uh, uh, you know, who's around now, like. 
do you listen? Do you do you, do you have playlists? Do you listen to new music as it's coming out? Are you you know? Like, yeah, yeah. I mean, I still listen to everything. I still listen to everything. Who do you like? Who would you be listening to right now on a sort of modern level? Who's coming out? Of pop That's music? new. Yeah. Travis is 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 a, is, a, is, a, is a I'm a big fan of him. Um, just Travis, no. Um, <laughs> just a playlist. <laughs> that's of it. Travis just Scott. all Travis got. Uh, no, I, I really like Travis's stuff. Um, there, there's a definite sonic thing going on right now. Mm. Mm. And that's what supplies is to me. Supplies is like a, that to me feels like, you know, swerving into that territory, but also bringing the theme of the record with you. Yeah, the, and the, the most record. important thing that Pharrell and I were conscious of when we were writing lyrics and melodies were that it was that it was very melodic. Yeah. yeah. You know? um, the, one of the co-proprietors of this studio, one of the co-owners of the studio, Alicia Keys, you know, she guests with you on a song, man, on this track, which is called Morning Light. She is... recorded it in the room over there. Yeah, so yeah. how'd that happen? I mean, I mean, obviously you're in the spot. This is, yeah. Was it a knock on the door? What does that sound like? like... So, so funny enough, um, it's one of three songs that I co-wrote with Chris Stapleton, who's right. another collaborator on the album. Um, and... The original idea was like, let's just, you know, let's write something very sort of Otis, homage, you know, Memphis stacks, mm -hmm. you know, with those those guitars and 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 so I was here, I was, you know, Alicia and Swiss came up. She was working in 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 a different room, and she came up, and I was I played, you know, I played Filthy first, and and played a couple of other things, and then. I I started to play Morning Light and Swiss like when the first note came in of the vocal Swiss Swiss did his thing he just like no 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 he's like again so I so I was like okay it's not what I expected him to respond to like that right and so I played it again and again first note you know starts to starts to happen I'm singing the every time there's a new sunrise you know and uh, you know, when I got to the chorus, he was like, "Cut it!" And it just the room went silent like this. And he looks over at Alicia. And he's like, "You have to sing this song with him." And we were all kind of like, "What?" You know? And he was like, "I know when I know." <laughs> That's a good. You know, he's doing a Swiss thing. That's a good Swiss. I know when I know. And. Uh, and it was funny because I get asked sometimes to feature on people's records, but sometimes it's pitched to me in a way where I don't feel like I relate to it. Yeah. Alicia and I have known each other for a long time, and I think we both respect each other as songwriters too. Mm -hmm. So I would never just go to Alicia and say, hey, will you come and sing on this? Like I figure if, if, if Alicia and I were to collaborate, you know, sort of famously for the first time that we would have set together and like yeah, yeah, yeah. really, you know, had a whole th a session to to think tank a record. Um, uh, but I just said, I was like, yeah, you should sing on it. And, and, um, and once she started, you know, she was like, you know, she's so chill. She was just like, yeah, I'm into it. And, and so we we just over the next couple of days we cut the record and because she, she was working on her own stuff and mm -hmm. and um, she's always kind of working. If I had this place too, I'd be working all the no time. Stop. But yeah, man, she just she elevated the record to just another level. Yeah, I love it, man. I think it's if you're gonna choose someone to collaborate with on a you know a male female duet, then you and it's a fantastic combination. It felt really great. good. It felt really. It just feels really good. The song like it 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 really feels like a a, a warm blanket. We get to a cornerstone on this record, Justin, that I've been looking forward to talking to you about. It's one of the most powerful songs on the record. It's called Say Something. It's a collaboration with you and Chris Stapleton, another one you guys co-wrote together, taking what you've done on stage now into a, you know, the studio and giving us something for forever. Mm -hmm. Is this song, in some part from your point of view, a reflection on, on recent misunderstandings and things that you've tried to say that have come from the, the heart and come from a good place but ultimately get twisted and turned and taken the wrong way? Well, yeah, for sure. That's part of it. Um, the song, we wrote the song the t almost a year ago. Mm. Um, and so a lot of, you know, weird things were happening and they still are, uh, in the world, but it was the first song we wrote together. Um, and he kind of came in and, 
And I thought to him, I thought to myself, I was like, you know, it'd be really cool to see if we wrote something and we just let Timberland and Danger just dress it, just just dress it, just see what happens. And um, and he came in and he was talking to me and he was like, how's everything been going? You know, I played him a couple of things that Pharrell and I had done, and he was like, wow, this is this is this is something different. And uh, and I said, I really think we could do something special. Um, and he's like, well, what, I mean, what do you want to write about? And I literally, just, I, I said, you know, I feel like, I feel like there's a lot going on in the world. I feel like there's always, you, like you said, like there's misunderstandings. Um, I said, and I really, I want to speak up and I want to say something, but I just, I just don't want to get caught in, in the rhythm of something, you know, cause like the rhythm can, if the rhythm goes off, everything goes, you know, the train goes off the tracks and, and he was just like, okay, I'll be right back. And he wrote those two lines down. Mm -hmm. And yeah. and then he sort of, you know, he took a second to himself and, and I think he kind of maybe with the notoriety that has, has, has come his way in, in recent years because he's, he's, he's penned so many songs for so many artists on that side of, of the fence. And now to be a solo artist, I think he's starting to see that like, you can be in the middle of a storm of confusion. I mean, there's a line in the song which cuts right to it, which is sometimes, and you have to, please forgive me if I get it wrong, I've done this a few no, times, but um, sometimes it, it's- Oh, sometimes the greatest way to say something is to, is to say, say nothing, nothing at all. all. Yeah. And we have access now, okay, if you're somebody who has a lot of people who listen to what you say when you're writing music or whatever, mm. and you choose to communicate through social media and have a direct dialogue, mm. then there is the potential for you to contribute in a very positive way to something you believe in. Sure. But equally, if you're caught up in the rhythm of it. it which I have been. Which you have been, yeah. you know. But I've, I've had both of those experiences. Absolutely. For sure. you know, the Jesse Williams thing, all these things that go on, you find yourself like, oh my gosh, like yeah. I've got to like correct this. For sure. I felt terrible. You know, you feel terrible. Yeah. You're like, oh man, that is not what I meant. Why did I do that? Right. Why and did you, I do that? And you realize, do I, do, I like, do it again? Well, you just realize too that like, yeah, patience really is a virtue. Like you have to learn that. I, you know, Chris and I were having this whole conversation about like, ah, people really care what we think. You know, they just want to hear our music, and it's like, well, we care what we think. And you know, you have this. You really have this internal struggle with it. People can just say a bunch of, and then people go like, well, I believe that. Yeah. You know, um, and, and and so it, it it can be it can be very confusing, um, and so I, I feel like I feel like that song is about that moment. I love the song, and uh, thanks, man. I, I it's really special to me. And you and Chris sure. are just brilliant, you know. And I'm assuming there'll be a performance and, and a chance for you guys to play that together at some point. Very soon. Mm -hmm. Very 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 soon. Yeah. Um, we spoke about hers. And well, a little bit, yeah. So, so the story behind that. Did was, you write the piano? Yeah, I did all the. I played all the. You got the emo. You got the emo on the piano down, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, it was rocking. like she. So basically, I put the bed of music down after I had edited together what she had said. But yeah. here's what happened. So I'm going to the studio to mix flannel, and I and I get this idea, and I call her on the way to the studio because she had the day off, and I said, "Will you do me a favor?" I said, "I want you to sit for the next ten minutes." and just think about this, and then I want you to make me a voice note and send it to me. Right. I said, but I want you to talk to one of your girlfriends mm -hmm. like I'm not there, and just uh, tell them uh, what it, you know, because you've told me before in a way, but tell them like, like, like I may not hear it, like what it means to you, for you to just like, have a piece of my clothing because that's, essentially the, that's what the way you're describing it yeah. may be one of the creepiest things that I've ever yeah heard you yeah say. no it could easily be <laughs> Can misconstrued you imagine as you're like talking single white female your girlfriends <laughs> about how great it is to wear my clothes <laughs> it's send it me is. that voice note it is no it is super creepy it's funny without the music she's bed, a good actress because it's not creepy to listen without to. without the music bed we we're listening to her like is this the right choice <laughs> like you know um yeah. But yeah, she has such a she has such a way about her that that it really comes off as like this heartfelt moment. Totally. And and it also sets up that song, which essentially like, I don't know, if if the if the eighties, if like the like the leather jacket 
you know, I, I mean, there's a line I say in Like I Love You, my you know, first song I ever recorded with Pharrell, I say, here, baby, put on my jacket. You know, and I think that what you're, what this, what that symbolizes is is protection mm -hmm. and security. Mm -hmm. And and that's why she, she says in there, it feels like a, an armor, mm. you know? And it's also like, it's him, you know, it's, it's, it's in, and I think that, that, um, that that's really what that song embodies is just like, you know, I, I, I'm going to wrap my arms around you and I'm never gonna let go. After final, one of my favorite joints you've ever made with Neptune's man, Montana. Is really? Just, oh, crazy, the beat is crazy. Wow. It's like it's like modern blackbirds, man. You know, when they used to have those those synths that like, doo -doo -doo -doo, yeah. it felt like you were flying off and out yeah. of, you know, off into the sky a little bit. For sure. I love Good that reference. track, I love it. And um, it's a special place, it's got a special place in your heart. You have, you know, you have, you know, have a place there. Um, mm -hmm. I proposed to my wife there. There it is. I wondered, what is it? What is that song really? What? Where are we going yeah. here? Yeah, and we love it. We love it there. It's just, it just, you know, um, and and originally, like the title of the song didn't come until the end, and just that reprise at the end, you know, <laughs> it's, it just it take works me back. Well in the song. <laughs> just take me back, and then I and then I was like, oh, you know. I'm call the song Montana. And Montana sounds good in a song. I mean, it'd, it'd be different. It was Poughkeepsie. He's not going to roll off the tongue <laughs> as well as Montana, you know? Yeah. So that that is ultimately kind of a song about 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 that, about the essence of your relationship and where you feel like that. That's where it, it, everything changed. Yeah. And... It's uh yeah. It's also the it's also my favorite lyric on the whole album. Which one? Uh, the bridge lyric, you know. Um, uh, you, uh, the lyric is, I know it's late o'clock. You know, which was funny because that came out of an accident. Pharrell had just had his tribe of children, mm. and <laughs> and uh, I kept joking with him. I was like, "Man, you went from like zero to you went from Elvis to the Beatles real quick." <laughs> you know, because um, he had had you know he had his babies, him, him and his lovely wife, and yeah. and he was on a different schedule for me. So he was he would come in at like six or seven a.m. And I would come in, I was like, I can't sing that early. So me even coming in to you know, work on stuff, is just doesn't make sense. And then he would leave around like three or four so he could go back home and help. And so I would get there around 10 or 11 and he would have, you know, put up a scratch idea of like mm -hmm. some sort of music, something, you know, that was inspiring him. And a lot of times too, it was like two or three different ones. And he's yeah. like, should we go there? Should we go there? And it's like, we sh yeah, you know, you'd pick one, we'd pick one each day that we were kind of like feeling based on what the weather outside or like, yeah. you know, we'd talk about, you know, it was like our, our mornings and, 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 and so, so he would, he would, uh, there was one day where he stayed later and he was, he had been up like for 12, you know, 14 hours and not even counting how much they were waking up, mm, you know, mm, every mm, mm, whatever to, you know. Dealing with the routine of yeah. newborns, three newborns. Yeah, I don't, I, can, a, I yeah. can't imagine. Yeah. I don't even, I, yeah. Um, may I never be that lucky. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, but he, um, he, he said it was, it was eight o'clock and he was like, man, I gotta go, man. It's late o'clock. And we were like, late o'clock. And, and he immediately like, got energized again and we we're like that's a great uh, yeah that's a great little line so anyways the the lyric to that bridge is i know it's late o'clock and we've been kissing for hours but when the moon wakes up the sun and our shadows cast up on the mountains it gives the stars something to watch and it just like for me like look it's, at you poetry it, night oh my nah, man God. it just feels like for me I, I feel like really i captured an exact moment that i lived you know, like, it, and, and and so it, it really is a special lyric to me, but I also feel like it just, it really, you can see it. You know, and anytime you can, you can see those lyrics, you know, like I said before, we're a real, we live in a real visual existence. So if there's some way you can tell people something and they can see it, then I feel like um, you really accomplished something. We enter into the nature suite toward the end of the record, you know, and we start to kind of really open the doors to the to the great wide open and uh, breeze off the pond, um, and and then we go into living off the land, mm -hmm. and then we go into the hard stuff. The hard stuff before we get to the end, right. and and those three songs to me really point 
Well, let me ask you a question first of all. If, if you're outside now, and we're outside with you, and this is real man of the wood stuff, and you're taking us there, and we're talking about peace and tranquility and searching for some kind of meaning away from all this chaos. Mm. Uh, we don't seem to have a very good relationship with nature right now. I agree. We should have a better one. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I mean, I, I, I hope, like, nothing would make me happier than for this album in all of its modernity to, like, actually take people outside. I think yeah. this album's meant to be listened to in, in a lot of different locations, but like uh, Breeze Off the Pond, I mean, the original idea for that song was just saying, you know, we're stronger than the oldest oak tree you can think of, and no one can change that. You know, you know, uh, you see these, you see storms come in, um, you know, and, and, and uproot a tree. So the idea that that you could say to a loved one that that nothing is going to uproot this tree, this tree is us. The bridge is is that proclamation where it's actually like it's it's taking that it's taking that idea of you know uh, I say what uh, what we got is 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 as solid as oak, so you know it'll never blow away like a breeze off the pond, mm. you know. Uh, our tree, our, our trees uh, on the lawn. The wind is always there, meaning like people talk, people talk, people talk. You know, with, what they're saying is just air, so so let it blow through you. Mm. You know, it doesn't matter. Yeah, it doesn't matter. And 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 you've always walked that line between privacy and accessibility. It would seem very well. I I don't know too many people who are in a relationship that by rights should be fodder for so many people, yet seem to be able to function without it being that. Well, I think it's I think that's a choice, man. Yeah. Uh, you know, like you think I said, it is. A lot. Some people would say would 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 question that and say that they never had a choice. But you believe that you can totally control that to a degree. I think you can choose how much you want it to affect you. Yeah. You know. Yeah. I think you. I think you can choose how much you want it to affect you. It requires. It, it's a learned technique. You don't just stumble into going like, oh, I don't care what people say. Like we, you know, everybody cares on some level, you know, especially the people closest to you, you know. But I yeah. feel like when you find, when you find yourself a father, and you realize that there's someone in this world that is more important than you, that you are actually responsible for. Yeah. You actually learn to give zero. And then, um, yeah, you mentioned the three of them. Um, living off the land, living off the land is, 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 is a tribute to uh, my, my, my grandfather in a way. Mm -hmm. um, when did he pass? Uh, five years ago. Okay. And um, what's the best bit of advice you remember he gave you? What's the lasting thing that you remember? Because he clearly, he's, you've mentioned him twice now today. And he was that guy that like had a saying for everything. Yeah. You know, and he was always really charming. And I came home from school one day and, and got, and, and had like ended up, I, I think I ended up in, in some sort of like detention because I had taken up for some other kid. And I was like, I shouldn't have got caught up in that. And he was just like, you know, it was always like these Southern sayings, like, yeah, boy, that's not your dog. <laughs> You're like, what? You know, meaning like, like, don't take in stray dogs. You know what I mean? They might bite. You, they're, you didn't train them, you know, or something like that. Like he, he always had a saying for everything. And he was very much like, you see still Bill, the Bill Withers documentary? Yeah, I loved it. So he was very much like him, which every time I see Bill Withers, I just feel like, I, like he's like my, like my surrogate grandfather. <laughs> Which is why I took this um, particular still and made sure I had that on my there phone. There you go. I mean, look at, find you somebody that looks at you like I look at Bill Withers. <laughs> like just, that is, <laughs> that is just like unadulterated love. <laughs> it's absolute, that's <laughs> adoration right there. But yeah, like, you know, he said, Bill Withers said one of the greatest things, you know, when he was talking about his, his, his kids, you know, wanting to do what he did. Um, and I feel like I may wrestle with that one day, you know, and, he, and it was like he said something about setting out for wonderful, but, but, you know, on your way to wonderful, you're going to have to pass through all right and take a good look around because that may be as far as you're going to go. Yeah. Like basically saying like there, there are so many things. Uh, we talked about the rhythm of things like there are so many things within the rhythm of life that can that conspire. Yeah to put you where you are. Yeah. And sometimes you can't see it because you wanted something, but it's not what you needed. Well, it's funny you bring that up, man, because in the last song of the record, beautiful song called Young Man, which is, you know, 
Silas is probably Silas's first recording yeah. credit yeah. ever. Yeah, no, not probably. The, the top of the song was like one of the first handful of times I caught him saying Dada. And he was, he was just a little over four months old. It's amazing. So it was really incredible. And then at the end of the record, it's, I was away, at, I was at the studio and-, and um, It was a voice note. He, it, was, it was a video actually that, that my wife recorded of him, you know. Yeah. And they were singing happy birthday to me because I was working on my birthday at the studio. And, and you know, that's at the end when he just says, I love you. And, you know, it's, it, it's, it's one of those things that you're like, you know, and, and I always knew, I always knew I wanted to write a song for him, but I didn't know it was gonna be a song to him. Mm. You know, it really turned out to be like, if I was gonna write him a letter, you know, um, I, I'd probably be, probably be more wordy and specific in the letter, but, but this was like, this was just my love letter to him that I felt like maybe this is something he can have as sort of a time capsule. <laughs> Thank you, man. Thank you, man. Appreciate awesome. it. Thank you.